Well, we are discussing the trigeminal pain pathway. This is part eight. And in this part, I want to discuss the theories of pain, including some relevant details of the history of pain. When did the pain first occur? In evolution of men. Well, it must have occurred about two lakh years ago when the first human being was delivered. Because the process of birth is painful at least to the mother. From there, if we jump to Aristotle, who lived before 2300 years back, then pain should be considered as an emotion. That was what Aristotle believed. And he thought that the origin of pain was from the heart and not from the brain. But this erroneous idea was should put to rest by the father of anatomy, Philopilus. And father of physiology, it is his treasure. And these are the people who knew about brain, that dissected human beings, maybe living, and they knew about the nouns. So from that time, we have been believing that the origin of pain is brain and not heart. And because the nerves were known, even in our Eastern literature, if we talk of the times of Sutruta, and Taraka, then we were aware of the nose, this Ayurvedic giant thought that there were at least four nose, cranial nose, the nose of the spatial senses. And in early times, what we call as impulses, well, they were not known. How from the periphery, when stimulus or stimuli are applied, how the message reaches to the spinal cord and brain was not known. Later on, it was called specific energy. Stimuli produce specific energy. That was the doctrine of Mueller. And later, still later, Newton sort of vibration conducted along the nose. 
and as we discuss further, I will go for the PowerPoint presentation and share the screen so that we can discuss the theories properly. And here I share the screen. Here. In pain or in the pain pathway, three neurons are involved. Here they are. The first one at the trigeminal ganglion. And a neuron is taken out to show that it is a pseudo unipolar neuron. Initially, one process with bifurcates. The second neuron is in the medulla oblongata for this pathway, mostly. But it is partly in the pons and partly in the spinal cord. Second neuron in the spinal nucleus, which is the postosome there at the spinal cord level. And similarly here, spinal nucleus, second neuron. The third neuron is in the thalamus within the nucleus, ventro, postero, median. This is thalamus in a horizontal section. And we find the neuron there, the third neuron. And then the exon of the third neuron is projected to the lower part of the post central gut, passing through the internal capsule and corona radiata. The internal capsule is in this location. And higher up is corona radiata. And there you find a round neuron in the cortex of the post central gyrus. So, up to thalamus, three neurons are involved. We have discussed this previously. One should try to find out when the term neuron was introduced. For many, many years, it was thought that all these neurons were continuous with each other. For here, if you consider one, two, three, and maybe that four, it was thought that all of them were continuous with each other. At that time, the synapse was not known. It was Ramon E. Cahal and Golgi who found out particularly Kahl, that neurons were not continuous. And this was called neuron theory. And for this great discovery, the duo, Kahl and Golgi, were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1906. Now we go to the next slide. Our knowledge of pain is limited. We 
because our knowledge of brain is also limited if we know more about brain than what we know today then our knowledge of pain will also be increased to that extent go to the next slide okay i the mouse this is the list of series of pains theory of specific energies i already referred to mueller's doctrine no impulses were known but specific energies pass along the nerves depending upon which kind of stimulus was applied at the periphery to the skin as for example but the uh, touch or pressure or temperature change the stimulus heat or cold for each one according to muller specific energy was produced in the conducting now and this doctrine was presented in 1842 then the next theory theory of intensity by or 1874 supported by alfred gold shider and also by the grandfather of darwin whom we know from his uh, theory of evolution it is must darwin in the 18th century anticipated this theory this is 19th century or but in the 18th century it has been darwin anticipated the theory of intensity which meant strong sensory stimulation it may be touch it may be hit it may be cold produces pain according to this theory marshall 1894 presented effect theory effect is emotion so he almost ridiculed the previous presenter of theory and said like the electrical that emotions are important rather than sensations then there is pattern here by nape in 1939 regal 1955 sinclair 1955 it deals with the periphery according to this theory specific 
receptors are not required. Today we know that there are specific receptors for touch, vibration, for heat, cold. But according to this packer theory, such specific receptors were not required. Whatever impulses were conducted centrally produce a pattern, a design as they collected, assembled. And that is how the pain began. This theory was rejected because we came to know that specific receptors are there. Another theory by Livingstone 1943 was called Central Summation Theory. And I will explain this further later. It considered the reverberatory activity in the central nervous system. And such activity, well, should have been demonstrated, but it has not been demonstrated. Nevertheless, this theory had powerful impact on later ideas. So basically, pattern theory and central summation theory did not require presence of any specific receptor. The next theory at serial number six here is called Port Theory. It was by Hardy in 1952. According to this theory, there is pain perception and there is pain reaction. Two separate things. When we were studying 55 years back, we were also taught like that. That pain has two components, perception and reaction. Now, if we go to the present definition of pain, which we will be doing during the course of this presentation, then these two are clubbed together. Pain perception plus pain reaction is equal to pain. Next is sensory interaction theory. But Noonbin, both 1959 and other, and this theory was very much uh, utilized by the subsequent researchers of the gate control theory and neuromatrix theory. The sensory interaction means different kind of sensory impulses. There is interaction between them. Two basic types of now fiber, thick and thin, were considered here and how they influence each other. And the final neuron at the level of the spinal cord or medulla oblongata called projection neuron or transmission neuron, how that was influenced by such an interaction 
and this particular theory also considered multi synaptic pathway multi synaptic pathway then gate control theory i will discuss details after some time was presented by wall and malzek in their research paper published in now uh, one of the leading journals in 1965 and details we are considering very soon and finally pain matrix theory or neuro matrix theory of pain presented by malzek in 1993 and subsequently because several papers he has published along with his colleagues 99 paper is with me and subsequently even in 2002 and later he published a uh, research paper on this theory well glitches of history or from history hippocrates son in law polypus in his book the nature of man wrote pain is felt when one of the humoral element is in the deficit or excess that suggesting a conceptualization similar to that held by the contemporary chinese physician and we refer to aristotle 1984 to 1922 bc consider touch as one of the senses and believe that pain resulted when an excess of vital heat caused an increase in the sensitivity of touch which arose from the flesh and was conveyed by the blood to the heart where the pain was experienced it was not the brain it was the heart according to aristotle like most other greek philosophers aristotle believed that pain experience was a negative emotion or quality of the soul and a state of feeling opposite to pleasure and the epitome of unpleasantness but that part has not changed even today because pain is uh, considered to be unpleasant even to be and i refer to herophilus 335 to 80 bc and erasistratus 310 and 250 bc of alexandria provided anatomic evidence that the brain was part of the nervous system and the nerves attached to the direction were of two kinds those for movements and those for feeling for nearly four centuries this work was lost to the roman world until rescued by galen in the 4th and 2nd century ad and galen is uh, known as prince of physician and charop was a contemporary of galen 4th and 2nd century ad
in 1664, 17th century. Descartes, this is not Descartes, okay. The pronunciation is Descartes. Thought that pain is like a bell ringing alarm system. Whose sole purpose is to signal injury to the body. Descartes is very famous for his uh, cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. What is the proof of one's existence? If somebody is thinking, then that means he or she is existing. Cogito ergo sum. And this is the, as we see in the next slide, is the theory precursor to the theory of specificity. Only if you consider Euler and his doctrine, the doctrine of specific now energies. According to which the brain received information about external objects and body structures only by way of the sensory nerves. And the sensory nerve for each of the five senses carries a particular form of energy, specific for each sensation. Muller's concept then was that of a straight through system. From the sensory organ or receptor to the brain or brain center responsible for the perception of the senses. And we have already alluded to the specificity or sensory theory. We stated that pain was a specific sensation with its own sensory apparatus, independent of touch, that must be not it. And other senses. This theory, which as previously mentioned, has been first suggested by Avicenna and later by Descartes, and also by Lord in 1853 and was definitely formulated by Schiff in 1858, following his analgesic experiment in animals. Well, uh, this is uh, derived from Bonica, 1980. The copyright will not be applicable here. Uh, his latest edition on management of pain is uh, published in uh, 2019. And there also a very good account of the theories of pain is available and one can refer. Precursor of specificity theory. René Descartes, right, 16th and 17th century. And I already discussed this. It is compared with an alarm system from the skin to the brain. There are many flows in the theory. How can one explain different kinds of sensations, particularly special sensations, hearing, and visual.
And here is that alarm system. Take this away. You see, there is fire there near the foot, and it be whatever specific energy or vibrations or impulses that are conveyed through the rope to the brain, and from the brain there is a command. Will pass so that one could withdraw the foot from the fire. And yes, 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 yes. It is compared with an alarm system from the skin to the brain. All the initial studies were done on. Skin, remember, not on mucosa, not on organs. And the studies were done on skin because that is the largest organ, easily available and easily accessible. So that is the Descartes and is. Precursor of specificity theory. We are referred to Mueller's doctrine, which is body two. But he was not sure about the specific energy in the sensory now. He was also not sure about the role of brain in this regard. It was thought that it was not the nerve but the brain which interpreted the type of sensation. Physiologists of the day were so much convinced of the doctrine that they believed that if you connected the auditory nerve to the visual center. The person should be able to see the thunder, and if you connected the object now with the hearing center, then the person could or should hear the lightning. Mueller considered only. Touch among the general senses, not pain. Already we have considered theory of intensity, eighteen seventy four. It was anticipated by Erasmus Darwin, or and Goldsider, Goldsider. So this was the nineteenth century, towards the end. But it was not convincing because experiments proved that a strong blast of air on skin does not produce pain. Strong blast of air, resulting in no pain, but a drop of acid produces the pain. Not a bottle of acid, mind you, just a drop of acid, just a short and small pin pricking the skin produces pain. But a strong blast of air did not. 
Well, both sides are same size. He believed in one theory at one time, and then he believed in another theory at other time. Then in 1894-95, we have Max von Preston. Max von Prey described spot, in spot, touch, spot, etc. And also made use of different kinds of receptors. which were unfortunately named by the names of the scientists who first discovered or showed them, of course, under the microscope. Healing different types of receptors to different kinds of sentences by deductive reasoning. If you examine, if you examine the back of the hand, dorsum of the hand, and then you put a pin there, or if you put hair there, and you apply pressure. That pressure, how much pressure that should be calibrated? Less pressure, then little more, then little more. Till you add to the pressure, and ultimately the pain is produced. That is what we have learned in the theory of intensity. Intense pressure, intense temperature. If they are applied, then ultimately the pain is produced. For exerting pressure, he took hair from a part of tail of horse. And today also, hairs are used to produce pressure. So, one first theory is that different types of receptors are required for different kinds of sentences. What was the deductive reasoning? The fingers and the palm that the touch sensation is predominant. And that's why in this region, because the misnus corpuscles were in big number, he correlated that they were responsible for touch. And likewise, he did for the other receptors. Pain is ubiquitous. And likewise, free now and things are also everywhere in the body. And after eliminating, eliminating the receptors for heat and cold, close is the name for the heat and pantrophini for the cold. After eliminating them, he reason that pain must be because of free now ending. And if I read the third para here in this slide, earlier Brix 1884 had recognized temperature and pressure spots, but not pain spots. Well, one press theory of cutaneous scientists is the basis of specificity theory. And uh, 
In the first para, I have mentioned that unfortunately named by the name of the scientists. Close and repeat like that, right? Because anatomists are not in favor of naming any structure of the human body by the name of any scientist who might have discovered or show the structures. And then we go beyond this. Central Commission theory by Livingston, 1943. And uh, that already I have referred to reverberating phenomenon. So what is that? Suppose this is the spinal cord. And so far we have been ignoring what I call internuncial neurons. So they are in between the peripheral neuron located, the first neuron located in the trigeminal ganglion and spinal ganglion, first neuron. And second neuron for the trigeminal now, spinal nucleus. Now that would be called transmission neuron or projection neuron. And at the spinal level, that neuron is in the posterior horn of the gray matter of the spinal cord. Transmission neuron, the second neuron, right? Now, here the stimuli impinge on this internal neurons, which are interconnected. And impulses are running in this circular fashion, looping. And this particular network is affected by the brain, central control. And it delivers also to the brain. And this network is also connected, this internuptial neuron network. Is also interconnected with the motor system, as for example, for movement, with the autonomic nervous system for various kinds of activities again. Because autonomic will deal with the smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. And then this is the transmission neuron. These are all interconnected, internuptial and transmission or projection. And then this will go to the brain, thalamus and brain. Isn't it? Fine. So there is a kind of summation in the central nervous system. It may be in the spinal cord, it may be in the medulla oblongata. If it is trigeminal now, we expect it in the particularly medulla oblongata. Well, before we discuss further, uh, we have to think about Sarington. in the 19th century and 20th century, 1856 to 1952. According to Sarrington, pain was not an independent sensation. He suggested that all stimuli capable of injuring, injuring tissue, 
should be labeled as noxious. And it was Terrington who coined the term nociceptor. And nociceptor to describe the unique activity by selective apparatus. Thereby, it defined a common ground for pain evoking stimuli. It was not an independent sensation, pain. If excessive heat is able to injure, very important here, injure the tissue, then that is a noxious stimulus. Excessive cold, excessive pressure, excessive touch, anything in excess, any sensation in excess can bring about pain. Actually, pain and nociception are also not synonyms. Their meaning does not exactly the same. Because nociception derived from no sere means injury. So it is concerned with the injury. But the way we define pain today, a lot of other things are involved. Even in the present definition, the damage is given importance. If you consider pain as a sensation, that is produced because of damage. So damage is given a lot of importance in even current definition, injury. He also provided evidence for the existence of inhibition in the central nervous system. It is not all excitation. There is a lot of inhibition. And that inhibition is very important in the next theory that we'll be discussing. Gain control theory. Well, incidentally, Sherrington was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1932. Some authors are writing 1921. That's not correct. In 1921, no Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine was awarded. So 1932, 1932 is the correct. Here, Serington. So Serington and Nociceptin and Nociceptor are considered together. And then Wall and Melanzac. Produced their theory, gain control theory, in 1965. Now, these two authors, Malzek and Wall, uh, they have written a very great uh, book on pain, textbook of pain. And the latest edition that uh, I have with me is uh, from 2013. I think about seven, eight years back also they produced the edition. Uh, and then it is not only about the theory, but it's about the pain, every aspect. Now, what is that theory? Where is the gate? 
as far as the spinal cord is concerned, it may be in the substantia gelatinosa. That substantia gelatinosa. I throw it uh, again. This is the one. Substantia gelatinosa. It is in the second lamina. Second lamina. We will discuss about the next set lamina. And what are the other elements shown here? I will. Uh, So then here, the thick fiber, a beta is going there. Thick fiber, larger diameter. Particularly the myelin is more there, more myelin. And here, less myelin. So, Small diameter fiber. This is from A delta and C, C fibers. A beta, then. When you take them, trace them to the spinal cord, well, you can see that a small diameter fiber inhibits the neurons in the substantia gelatin. And the large diameter fiber excites the neurons in the substantia gelatin. And from the substantia gelatin of the neuron, you can see this process is going Just before the large and small fiber, the sinus with this main neuron in the pathway, transmission neuron or projection neuron. This is pre synaptic inhibition. This is also inhibition. The idea behind this is. That as long as the thick fibers are conducting the impulses to the transmission neuron, the thin fibers, which are the pain fibers, they cannot conduct because, because the gate is closed for them. And that means wherever the pain is occurring, if you apply touch, if you apply pressure, then those impulses will be conducted further and will be able to influence, influence the transmitter neuron. It may be in the spinal nucleus as far as the trigeminal nerve is concerned. And the pain impulses are not allowed. The thick fibers and their impulses crowd the region and the thin fibers and their impulses, pain, pain impulses, are not allowed to go further through the gate, because this uh, will be going to the thalamus and to the postcentral gyrus. So the gate is closed as long as the impulses are conducted in the thick fibers. 
So, what kind of gate it is? Well, by discussing with my colleagues, uh, once I said it's an anatomical gate. Then I said it is a physiological gate, functional gate. Then I said that it is uh, a metaphorical gate. And I also said hypothetical gate. And every time I said something, I was asked, why do you call it the hypothetical gate? Why do you call it metaphorical gate? Why do you call it the functional gate? And then you have to answer that. But actually, what is the function of our gate? To allow entry or exit, isn't it? Or to prevent. So that kind of function is absorbed by whatever neurons are in this rocket center. It's a substantia related to that. The fiber, thick fibers are conducting impulses that they are not inhibited to conduct. Then the gate is open for them, but close for the pain impulses. So that is the basis of some treatment, isn't it? Touch pressure, temperature can inhibit and close the gate for pain impulses. Even the pain can inhibit pain. And that is the principle behind, behind the counter irritation that we employ for treatment. Now, the idea which is a very good here is that there is a central control. The impulses are going to the center, to the brain, to the thalamus, no? To the post central gyrus and other areas also of the cerebrum. But from those higher sources, you find impulses coming down. Now this is going up to the brain and this is going down and affecting the gauge. So if we think that we should not feel the pain, well, we may not be able to do it, but our soldiers, our uh, soldiers were able to do it. So they are wounded too much during the battle. They, they do not feel the pain. They want to die for the country. So if we look at the wound, you will feel that the person must be in excruciating pain. But the person is not able to feel that because from his brain, the impulses are conducted and they close the gate and do not allow the pain impulses to proceed further up. Gate control gate. The top gate was used by Melzek and Wall so that everyone could understand that. Okay, that's the idea. And this is certainly happening at the microscopic level because you can't see the substance as gelatinosa and neuron without the aid of microscope. And uh, we are on to the next theory, neuromatrix theory presented by Melzek. And here is the theory. It emphasizes brain more than the spinal cord and the periphery. It advocates widespread networks of neurons in the brain forming a template. That template is decided by genetics initially. But later, 
the environment in the form of input plays its role. The theory talks about or discusses neuro signature, neuro sub signature, neuro modules, and the neural hub also for storing the experience. The previous theories were not able to explain. As for example, phantom limb pain. And many chronic pain syndrome. And that's why Melzek and his colleagues thought about this particular theory. Because it is relatively easy to explain acute pain. Relatively easy to explain pain originating from the parts of the body which are with the body. But how to explain pain when a particular part is removed from the body? As for example, a tooth is removed from the body. And still you feel pain in the tooth. Suppose there is amputation of the leg. So below knee amputation is there. Leg is leg and foot are not there. And even then one complaints of pain in the foot. Thumb is removed. And still one says that he is feeling very severe pain in the thumb. How to explain? And likewise, several autoimmune diseases which bring about chronic pain, again, difficult to explain. Similarly, trigeminal and neuralgia, how to explain that? Pain results from an interaction between the nervous system, endocrine system, and the immune system, according to this theory. And the input, the sensory impulses which are coming from the periphery are going to act on the neural matrix, which is in the brain, and which is a, a widespread, widespread network. Okay. So many neurons are there, but that template is decided by genetics. Remember. And then acted upon by input from the periphery. Whatever comes from the periphery, from the injured part, etc. The theory has discussed the role of uh, stress, then uh, cortisol, uh, noradrenaline. And the matrix uh, in the brain is connected with not, not just the uh, post central gyrus and sensory areas of the brain, but also with the uh, limbic system, as for example. That is how once the pain uh, develops, there can be the emotion, emotion, because with emotion and behavior, the limbic system is concerned. So, not only the sensory part, you feel the pain, pain is a sensation, but recent definition of pain has included, pain is not only a sensation, pain 
These are transition and emotion. And it is not a pleasant sensation. Unpleasant sensation. And emotion. And because of pain, you try to avoid the pain causing maybe surgery. You plan out how to deal with it. So there are several aspects of pain. Pain is a multi-dimensional topic, isn't it? Not unidimensional. And as we go to the last point here in this slide, it comes as a shock to conclude that you don't need a body to feel a body or that the brain itself can generate every quality of experience which is normally triggered by sensory input. But that is not required even without the sensory input. Brain can generate pain. And that is uh, Monica. I already referred to his book, Management of Pain. Uh, 2010 was available to me. Uh, recently, 2019. Edison is also there now, the latest. A pioneer of pain. And somebody was instrumental in uh, founding the society, which is called International Society for the Study of Pain, whose website is also there. And from time to time, uh, the definition of pain is uh, revised. Early definition was in 1997, as for example. And there, uh, the terminology related to pain is also given, uh, like the elodemia. And anesthesia, doloreza, difficult to understand. No, these are all there mentioned on the side. And this is a, a slide from that side. And this is the International Association for the Study of Pain. And then there is International Headache Society. These are there. And from time to time, we can utilize what they present. And so far we have not defined. In all the seven parts, the pain was left undefined, isn't it? In fact, I remember uh, one of my colleagues from Bombay said GS Medical College previously was added to at one of the Conferences of our society, Anatomical Society of India, uh, as it uh, indoor, a long time back, uh, Dr. Natarajan, I'm talking about, he said, it is fine till you define. That's why we avoided defining. So, what is the definition? Uh, Website is given here, iasp-pain.org. An unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. The damage. Uh, Maybe actual or potential. That potential part difficult to understand. But you will find patterns where you are not able to discover any damage. Even then, 
is complaining of pain and maybe severe pain. Isn't it? So actual or potential, but potential means something which is likely to occur in future. But pain is present and the damage is future. Difficult to understand, isn't it? Now, how the word pain is derived, Middle English from Anglo French, pain, pain, suffering. From Latin, poena, penalty or punishment. Even today, many believe that we suffer from pain because we have done something, we have committed some sin, and that's why we deserve penalty or punishment. And from Greek, point, payment, penalty, and recompense. And uh, these are my references. Uh, the biggest references are the book. I, I talk about the book uh, uh, by Wall and Melzek, Textbook of Pain, 6th edition, 2013. I talked about uh, Bonica's uh, Management of Pain. Here it is. Latest edition, 2019. Now the editors are different. That is the fifth edition. Uh, I have referred some time back, and from time to time I refer the Challenge of Pain, published in 1996. Again, the authors are Benzett and Moon. Well, a very good account of theories of pain is available. And among the very recent uh, articles, well, this one by Shimoji and Yokota, published very recently, 2021. There is a pain. Chapter is there, and you can refer that. And so this is not very recent, but Paul's book. It's an article, not book. Ideas about pain, a historical view, published in Nature Reviews Neuroscience, 2007. That gives timeline of the various events occurring related to the pain. And uh, And uh, I stop for say now, and we are back to the screen where uh, I'm not sharing anything. I do not know how much time I have taken, but uh, if pain uh, discussion is without any pain, well, <laughs> that uh, is uh, difficult to accept, isn't it? So uh, this was part eight and uh, I will try to cover various theories of pain and you can simplify in your own way. And uh, so basically that theory of specificity, theory of specificity, is a specific receptors are there, like free now and or maybe other. Then specific neurons are there. So the first neuron we talked about, the second, third, like that specific neuron, they conduct only pain impulses and no other impulses. That is specificity. And there, Final destination is pain center. That is in the brain. But there is no pain center. 
because it's not that only one party is involved. So we uh, refer to four central guidance, general sensory area, yes. and lower part of that for the trigeminal, right? The trigeminal, whatever we have considered for the spinal level can be applied. So substantia gelatinosa in the spinal cord, well, similar part is there in the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal now, right? And it is called medullary horn, medulla oblongata. Medullary horn is there, and there there is a gate. You get it. So the pain center, that one particular area is responsible, that will be the ideal specificity theory. Ideal specificity theory. But that is not the case. That's why one has to go for other theories, particularly gait control. And it also has been challenged. The only positive part of this theory is that it stimulated others to research further. In fact, uh, if we refer Paul 2007, then he said that it is not true that specific uh, neurons are not there. It is, they are there. And they also say that uh, substance as gelatinosa like uh, center is not there, uh, gate. That, that is not there. They, they were not able to locate it in that region, second layer of the uh, posterior home of gray matter. Uh, but the descending impulses, descending inhibitory impulses, modulating the upward conduction of pain impulse. Everybody is happy with that idea. Because previously it was not known. That is a very important. So one should refer Paul for uh, uh, the loopholes which uh, are there in the gauge control theory. And uh, neuromatic theory, I do not know why Bonica in his, uh, uh, of course, editors are different, but uh, 2019 edition, this theory has not been mentioned at all. Neuromatrix 2019 edition. So that is uh, a bit surprising to me. And uh, we can uh, apply this theories uh, and how if the stimulus is excessive intensity is more than it can produce pain. So that, that appears to be convincing, isn't it? Excessive pressure, excessive heat, excessive cold. That is all there. And uh, I think uh, this is all that I wanted to discuss. Whatever I have missed, uh, I will be uh, writing in the description attached with this particular presentation uh, because I'm going to put it once again on the YouTube. Here I terminate this particular presentation. Thank you very much.